Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and another detailed weather forecast update coming your way for Tuesday the 4th of November 2025, Melbourne Cup Day. I've got a detailed forecast for the Melbourne Cup throughout the course of today, but I've also got an update on the storm situation over in southeast Queensland, including when the next severe thunderstorms are expected, a cut-off low-pressure system impacting Western Australia, and a surge in the Madden Julian Oscillation, which will result in a surge in tropical moisture across northern Australia, is set to bring above-average rainfall through the later half of November. All the details on that, plus more coming up in today's weather forecast update. Let's get things started over in Southeast Queensland. If you're not brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. But Southeast Queensland has been lashed by a four-day outbreak of very violent severe thunderstorms in a few places. Some of them dropped hailstones up to 10 centimetres in diameter. Other storms brought damaging wind gusts up to 150 kilometres an hour. And we've had constant reports of tornadoes throughout the weekend, all of which have been unconfirmed. However, it gives you an idea of the scope of the thunderstorms that we have been talking about. They have been very, very strong indeed. The good news is, though, they are now leaving southeast Queensland. We had a couple of thunderstorms last night through the Brisbane city area, but you can see on the radar imagery there is just a few showers lingering around the southeast corner of Queensland, a bit of a line towards the west of the Darling Downs in the Brisbane city area, and a little bit of lightning just sitting offshore right now. But apart from that, it is a calm and collected picture through southern Queensland, with this rainfall pushing further and further offshore. As we get out through the remainder of this morning, we're expecting this to become a more and more minimal uh, concern towards Queensland. Shower activity and thunderstorm activity is not expected this afternoon and south of the line between Mackay out towards Mount Isa and a few weak thunderstorms are possible inland from the North Queensland coastline. However, it doesn't really look like anything serious is going to bubble, uh, bubble up tonight. Nothing in the way of severe thunderstorms for the first day in at least a week across Queensland. Pushing things through Wednesday, it's a similar but even calmer picture, even for northern Queensland, not looking at anything on Wednesday. Thursday will be equally calm. Friday is when thunderstorm chances do begin to increase again around the Charleville and the Roma area into central Queensland. A very weak outbreak of some isolated pulse thunderstorms storm activity possible around Lightning Ridge in New South Wales, north to Thallon and St. George in southern Queensland. Nothing concerning expected out there, but we may be talking about the isolated risk of damaging winds and heavy rainfall, maybe even some hail. Saturdays when thunderstorms fire out once again, major forecast models have been calling for a couple of days for an outbreak through north central New South Wales around the Lightning Ridge, Moree, Inverell, Wollongara area, and then over in towards south central Queensland, particularly out towards the west of Gundawindi, so we're talking Fallon, St. George, Roma, Injun, and Charleville. Conditions look over okay for these thunderstorms. It's nothing flash. We do have a little bit of a dry slot and wind shear values are through the roof, actually up around the 100 knot mark. And our cloud base is sitting at about 2,000, which means for the most part, these storms are expected to be low precipitation storm modes, but with steep lapse rates. And as mentioned, that dry slot there where those temperatures drop quickly through the environment, we may be talking about a hail risk around the St. George area. Nothing in the way of giant hailstones, but we may still be talking about that hail risk. Either way, these thunderstorms are going to be quite pretty. So chases out in this area, it may be worth a trip out there. However, if you're chasing in the southeast Queensland region, it might not be worth a drive. Sunday is not going to be a flash outbreak of thunderstorms. It's going to be a pretty stock standard garden variety day of thunderstorms through south Queensland at this time of the year. Storms will upscale later on into the day as they normally do, get up into parts of the South Burnett forecast district around Kingaroy and then uh, north of Toowoomba. We may, be, it may even be talking about a bit of a thunderstorm risk into the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area if severe thunderstorms develop. I will consider live coverage, of course, as usual, and lots of thunderstorm activity expected north to Taroom, Rolleston, and Emerald and Jericho as the night pulls on. We'll then talk about this rainfall streaming through once again, very similar to how the thunderstorms yesterday and today have entwined with a little bit of rainfall, and that may spark a thunderstorm or two on Sunday morning into early Sunday afternoon through parts of southeast Queensland. And considering convective available potential energy values are going to sweep through into this part of Queensland, particularly over the border into the northeast of New South Wales, there may be an isolated severe thunderstorm risk on Sunday afternoon, the 9th of November. I wouldn't get too excited for this, though. It really doesn't look like a significant or a substantial outbreak of thunderstorms or rainfall for that matter. It just looks like something healthy that's coming through some more much needed rainfall and they will take that with open arms through southern Queensland, let me tell you. So very, very good to see this rainfall that it is continuing to pile on is very good to see. So the key takeaways from that, Saturday and Sunday, nothing significant is expected. We then talk about an isolated risk of thunderstorms through parts of north central Queensland around the Emerald, Dingo, Rolleston, Claremont, Injun and Taroom area. And in this part of Queensland at this time of the year, we can see some pretty nasty thunderstorms develop like we saw yesterday afternoon. So this will be a spot to watch. We've got pretty decent convective available uh, potential energy values as well streaming into this part of Queensland. Nothing off the charts, but it looks like Wednesday the 12th of November may also become a day to watch. But uh, in short, not 
seeing anything through parts of the Brisbane or the Gold Coast area, we then see an uptick in rainfall and moisture moving through Queensland after the 15th of November. And this builds into that Madden Julian oscillation with that big rainfall surge that we're talking about as that MJO moves over towards Northern Australia. We're gonna see a pretty substantial uptick in cloud cover and moisture that's gonna be streaming through uh, central and then eventually on in towards Eastern Australia after November 15th. And this will translate into some pretty significant rainfall accumulations through parts of South, the Southern Queensland and Northern New South Wales and pretty much all through New South Wales to be honest. There are some pretty substantial rainfall accumulations on the forecast. Now I'm not going to go too far into detail about this because we don't actually know that much about this weather system yet but I do expect some large low pressure system to move through parts of Queensland and New South Wales. Lots of rainfall would be expected at this time of the year. We're talking about this uptick in moisture for quite a while and mid-November has always thrown up those warning signs of uh, providing some pretty significant rainfall accumulations through parts of central Queensland. This is something I'm going to have to look at uh, quite uh, deeply over the next couple of days but this is your heads up that we may be talking about some relatively substantial rainfall accumulations uh, through areas of central Queensland out towards the west of the Darling Downs and the Granite Belt and some especially uh, impressive rainfall accumulations are possible down on the New South Wales coastline as well. We've got values here now on the forecast getting close to 400 millimetres in a few spots. Now of course we have to take this with a heavy pinch of salt and start comparing it between other major forecast models of which not much in the way of comparison can be drawn because major forecast models are still tossing and turning on this weather event here but it does paint the picture that we are looking at these increased rainfall uh, events moving through parts of Queensland and New South Wales. By the time this is uh, into fruition, we're talking about mid-November, and that's when this extremely strong Indian Ocean Dipole, this extremely strong negative Indian Ocean Dipole is going to continue to enhance that moisture, particularly through uh, late November into early December before the true monsoon pipes up and thwarts off the IOD. We're going to see this uh, moisture become a real problem through parts of Queensland and New South Wales, and a substantial uptick in rainfall is expected to occur. Now, this is more sort of inland areas. As you can tell, the areas around Charleville and Roma pick up more rainfall than, say, those on the Sunshine Coast or down in towards southeast Queensland. That's pretty normal for a weather event like this. And then all of that rainfall carries over into a low pressure system that uh, potentially develops offshore from the New South Wales coastline. Still, though, like I said, for exact numbers on this, some of these locations, we're going to have to give it at least a week to fester before we can start talking about exact precipitation figures that we're predicting at for certain locations. But it is an interesting feature and now one that I'm going to keep closely monitoring over the next couple of days. Put simply, mid-November is now shaping up to be potentially quite wet for parts of Queensland and New South Wales. Nothing on the cards for northern Queensland. Unfortunately, a lot of places up there really calling out for a little bit of rainfall now. And you can see between the 10th out to the 18th of November, when rainfall has been predicted pretty consistently by some major forecast models to tick up. We will still be talking about the risk of isolated shower and storm activity, of course, quintessential for this time of the year across northern Queensland. And after about the 9th of uh, November, we are starting to talk about some more frequent shower activity coming through for at least a couple of days out, especially around the 14th, 15th and 16th of November. But at this point in time, we're not talking about any kind of cut off low pressure system developing into the northern parts of the Coral Sea and as such rainfall figures across northern Queensland remaining around that normal figure. We're not seeing anything out of the ordinary yet. Late November is typically when we start to see those chances of big rainfall accumulations begin to uptick there and from what I've spoken to or from who I've spoken to up in northern Queensland typically around Christmas time is when the first real rainfall begins to tick up across parts of northern Queensland. So we will need to keep a close eye on things up there. It's not long away until this rainfall really does begin to pop up in towards northern Queensland but for now, it doesn't look like we have much on the forecast up there interesting feature on the long range forecast right now and it goes uh, to show that the GFS is not a forecast model to be trusted in long range tropical cyclone forecasting or medium range long uh, medium range tropical cyclone forecasting I should say because it's got an interesting spin up around the Cocos Keeling Islands after the 10th of November. Now this could happen considering the extremely negative Indian Ocean dipole phase that we are currently within a tropical low would have some very favourable conditions here around the Cocos Keeling Islands and through Christmas Island but considering we've also got another system developing off of Western Australia, it paints a pretty uh, grim picture for the GFS's reliability. It's calling for two tropical lows already occurring in the same week between the 10th out of the 17th of November. Uh, and again, that's just not going to happen. Other major forecast models are not calling for anything in the way of low pressure system or tropical low pressure system activity. We may start to see some low pressure systems spin up, particularly as we get out towards the 15th of November. There is increasing signals of tropical low activity towards the south of Indonesia. But at this point in time, it's not a major concern and it's not something we're looking at 
tracking towards West Australian coastline and as such it's something that I would like to just talk about when it happens as opposed to really creating a lot of hype for something that is just not going to develop or, or impact anyone for that matter. Another interesting feature that we have that is West Australian focused is this massive cutoff low pressure system and it's really thrown out some strong wind gusts uh, just south of that trough that's being pulled into it. We've got these wind gusts uh, here or these sustained winds rather around the 70 km an hour mark and winds already in the Perth metro area gusting well up towards that 70 km an hour mark. In fact the axis convective forecast model is an incredible one to use for wind speeds and it really paints a picture of the hills here. 80 to 90 km an hour wind gusts and you might have been hearing those in the audio of this forecast update so far. It is extremely windy across the southwest of Western Australia this morning and then being pulled into this low pressure system. Wind gusts approaching 100 km an hour but it is relatively dry. These cut off low pressure systems because they develop so far south and away from all of this tropical moisture there's really not a lot of rainfall or moisture to be talking about. We do have some thunderstorm activity that's moving through into parts of the southwest this morning. It's not really anything interesting and it's not nothing of a severe variety either but major forecast models are suggesting some more thunderstorm activity particularly towards the uh, northern wheat belt as we get throughout the remainder of this morning and potentially some severe thunderstorm activity out towards the uh, east of southern cross later today. We may even see a strong thunderstorm or two develop into parts of the wheat belt just outside of the Perth city area later today and into tonight. And if it does develop within this proximity of the Perth metro area I am going to go out and have a look at it. This is an interesting feature now in the forecast models. The axis convective can get things really really right particularly on days like this with cut off low pressure systems even with our target area being absolutely massive for a potential storm chase. We do have some rather uh, Im impressive convective available potential energy values. I know all of my Queensland viewers are just laughing at me right now laughing at 500 joules per kilogram being called conve uh, uh, impressive convective available potential energy values but it is impressive for the southwest corner of WA. Typically we've got values here of 100 to 200 at this time of the year which we're uh, talking about for a thunderstorm outbreak so to see 500 on the forecast is is something that we will definitely take with a, uh, a, a, an interest, that's for sure. And the fact that we do have major forecast model support and a little bit of thunderstorm activity, which could potentially be severe thunderstorm activity towards the northwest of Perth, or the northeast of Perth, rather, it is a bit of an interesting feature. This may also track into the Perth metro area, but a lot of dry air into the northern levels of the atmosphere, into the upper levels of the atmosphere. And even though we do have a bit of a 500 HPA dry slot, it's not an overly favorable forecast for severe thunderstorm activity. Still though, it's one that I'm gonna watch like a hawk throughout the course of today and who knows I may be driving up towards the north of Perth for a bit of a storm chase later, uh, later today so I will keep an eye on that. Melbourne Cup is today now it's not an overly pretty picture for the Melbourne Cup we do have a little bit of shower activity particularly towards the north through parts of north central Victoria but right now Melbourne is in that little bit of a dry slot with the rainfall but we are seeing a little bit more push in as this low pressure system moves towards Tasmania. We've got another three or four hours before this rainfall really does pick up into the Melbourne area we are expecting a bit of rainfall to develop into the late afternoon hours and potentially some heavier falls into the late evening hours as well. But for, uh, for the most part today, the Melbourne Cup, we are looking at relatively dry conditions, maybe with an intermittent shower or two, but it looks like the rainfall is going to stay out of the Melbourne City area and should keep the Melbourne Cup relatively dry throughout the course of today. Winds, though, are not overly favourable for uh, an outdoorsy day. Uh, we've got wind gusts here around 50 to 55 kilometres an hour out of the west-northwest. Not very pleasant, and these wind gusts are going to continue to increase throughout the course of today. Uh, in fact, peaking at around around uh, 2 or 3 o'clock this afternoon or into this evening actually with gusts around that 55 kilometres out of that west-northwest. So winds, it's just going to get windier through the Melbourne city area today and the rainfall chances are going to continue to increase after about 3 or 4 o'clock today. So not overly concerning for the big race. However, we will still be watching it with uh, uh, very close tabs. It could get quite interesting, uh, especially a little bit later on touch and go with some of the later races in the day and that rainfall that is going to be coming through. But overall for Melbourne, it's an okay forecast for the race we've at least not got any rain and it's just going to be a bit windy and cool in the Melbourne city area. That is going to do it though for today's weather forecast update. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it informative, preferably both. And if you have, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video whilst you're at it. The support lately has been massively appreciated. I could not thank everybody enough and I cannot thank the channel sponsors enough. Their names are on screen right now. And uh, yeah, there is just so many of them and I'm very, very thankful for each and every one of the names on this list. It is massively, massively appreciated. But that is going to have to do it for me today. Have a great day. Enjoy the race and enjoy the calmer conditions throughout the course of this week, Queensland, because uh, there is very little rest in storm season, so enjoy it whilst it lasts. But that's going to be all for me today, and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.